Today in class, we talked about how uh, we talked about different properties of addition. We talked about the commutative property and the associative property. And these are just basically some some rules that you can use to your advantage to make adding simpler. And I'll show you some examples of that in a moment. Um, the commutative property states that um, here's an example right here. The commutative property states that um, you can switch these two numbers, 1 plus 2, one, 1 over 2 plus 3 over 5 equals 3 over 5 plus 1 over 2. You can just switch the two terms in your addition problem, and you'll get the same answer. That's like saying 1 plus 2 equals 2 plus 1. We all know that is true. That's a commutative property right there. Now before I talk about the next one, the associative property, I want to point out that in math, when you have parentheses, that tells you um, what you have to do first. So whatever is in the parentheses is what you do first. So the associative property, uh, you can see here we have 2 ninths plus 1 eighth plus 3 eighths, and on the other side of the equal sign we have 2 ninths plus 1 eighth plus 3 eighths again. The numbers are in the same order. The only difference is that here the parentheses are around the 2 ninths plus 1 eighth, and here the parentheses are around the 1 eighth plus 3 eighths. And that means I can do these two first, I can add these two first, or I can add these two first. It doesn't matter. I'll get the same answer. And um, there are advantages to knowing that because take a, if you take a look at this, this is 2 ninths plus 1 eighth, this first one. This second one is 1 eighth plus 3 eighths. Well, which one's easier to add? this one clearly because they have the same denominator. I don't have to find a least common denominator. I can do this in my head. 1 8 plus 3 8 that is uh, 4 8 2 ninths plus uh, 1 8 well, I have to find a least common denominator. And if I were going to go through all of that, I would find the least common denominator 72. And I'd have 16 over 72 uh, plus 9 over 72 anyway. I'd have to do all this stuff. But here I can just do this in my head. Now, um, later on, once I found out what this is, something over something over 72 plus 3 eighths, then I'd have to find a common denominator again. Here I would have 2 ninths plus 4 eighths, and I'd have to find a common denominator, but here I only have to do it once because I recognize that these two terms have the same denominator, and I use the associative property to add those first. So associative property basically is add the easiest stuff first. Commutative property says you can flip them around if that's easier for you. So here's here's an example. Um, 2 and 5 eighths plus 5 six is in parentheses, and then I add 1 and 1 eighth. Well, 2 and 5 eighths and 1 and 1 eighth both have an 8 in the denominator, so I obviously want to put those together. I want to add those first. I can do that in my head. So first I'm going to, I need to put them next to each other in, in my problem. Now um, I can use a commutative property for that. I can just flip these around. I have 2 and, f uh, excuse me. I have 5 sixths plus 2 and 5 eighths, in parentheses, plus 1 and 1 eighth. Now my eighths are next to each other, but these first two terms are still in parentheses, so I have to uh, move the parentheses because whatever in the parentheses are what I do first. So now I'm going to change it to 5 sixths plus 2 and 5 eighths plus 1 and 1 eighth. So, now I have my eighths together. Now I can um, add these add these two um, eighths, and I get um, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, uh, 5 plus 1 is 6, my denominator is 8, so I have 5, 6 plus 3 and 6 eighths. Let me erase uh, my previous work so I have a little bit more room. Um, 5 sixths plus 3 and 6 eighths. Now, um, I like to simplify as much as possible so I can work with small numbers. 
Six eighths can be simplified uh, by dividing the top and bottom by two, and I get three fourths. So now I have five six plus three and three fourths, and I need to find the least common denominator of six and four. So I'm going to write my sixes and my fours here. Four, eight, twelve, and then six would give me six and twelve. So this is the fact. This is the multiple that that six and four have in common. So my least common denominator is twelve. So I'm going to find equivalent fractions. Five over six equals blank over twelve. Three over four equals blank over twelve. Six uh, times two is 12, so I multiply the top times two and I get 10. Four times three is 12, so I multiply the top times three and I get nine. And therefore, if I, I can change these fractions to um, 10 twelfths plus three and nine twelfths. Um, three plus nothing is three. 10 twelfths plus 9 twelfths is 19 twelfths. And I'm going to erase this to give myself more room. And I just, uh, I have a mix, I have a, um, an improper fraction here, so I just need to change this to a, mi a mixed number. So I have 19 over 12. 12 goes into 19 one time. My denominator stays the same. If I subtract 19 and 12, I get 7. So 3 and 19 twelfths becomes 3 and plus 1 and 7 twelfths, which is 4 and 7 twelfths. Well, there were a lot of steps to this problem, but I can tell you that if I had added these together instead of um, 2 and 5 eighths and 1 eighth, it would have been longer. It would have been, I would have added more unnecessary steps. I'll do another one. Here we have, uh, for number two, we have 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths plus 3 fourths. Well, I know these, these, uh, these two terms have the same denominator, but they're not together in the parentheses. They're next to each other. They're not together in the parentheses. So I'm going to move my parentheses. I'm going to use the associative property. 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths plus 3 fourths. See, now... I do my twelfths first, five twelfths plus five twelfths, I can do that in my head, that's ten twelfths. And then I add three fourths. Um, <clears throat> now I notice that four is actually a factor of twelve, so if I multiplied my uh, top and bottom of my fraction, my numerator and denominator, by three, I would be, um, everything would be in twelfths. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12. So I replace all that with 9 twelfths. 10 twelfths plus 9 twelfths is 19 twelfths. This looks familiar. We just did this one. Um, we just saw something like this. 12 goes into 19 one time. My denominator is 12. 19 minus 12 is 7. And my answer is 1 and 7 twelfths. If I had done this first, it would have taken a little bit longer. I just want to look for a shortcut. So that's basically it. It's pretty much a review of our previous um, problems, but instead of adding two numbers, we're adding um, three either fractions or mixed numbers. And when you do that, you definitely want to group together the, the fractions that have the same denominator first using the commutative and or associative properties because um, it will cut out uh, some extra steps that you will not, not have to take, and that's always, that's always a good thing if you can do it.